Welcome to this video in which I'm going to be analyzing the Duke Fuqua MBA application last year, typically around 4,000 students applied uh, and about 433 gotten, right? Uh, when I say 433 gotten, 433 is the class strength. Uh, compared to many of the top schools, it is still slightly on the lower end, okay, if you compare it to, let's say, uh, Wharton or Harvard. So it's slightly on the lower end, but uh, still, um, I think the main thing uh, here is Duke focuses so much on the personal stuff. It focuses so much on who you are as a person, uh, which is why surprisingly, the median GMAT score is just around 710, which is a lot lower than uh, many of its peer competitor schools, uh, where it hovers around the 720, 730 mark, right? In fact, uh, if I remember last year, uh, it was even lower than 710. So in that sense, um, you know, Duke, if, if you talk about it, if you go to their website, I think one strong message that uh, comes through is Team Fuqua, right? So they believe in teamwork. Uh, so that's the whole idea. The, the culture is about teamwork. Uh, so a lot of your essays, a lot of what they're looking at in interview is how are you, how do you play uh, in a team? You know, are you a person who will thrive in such an environment? Healthcare has always been one of uh, the strong points. As an Indian, if you're not in healthcare, don't even uh, talk about healthcare because uh, getting H-1B visas in healthcare has been a uh, little dicey, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, but apart from that, it's known for uh, healthcare. Uh, the other interesting thing about uh, FICWA that I've uh, heard from students, so at Crack Verbal, we have had many students who have gone into this program over the last several years. And uh, one thing that I've heard from them is during the fir first year, during the core courses, that time itself, there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the electives can be uh, taken in such a way that you can actually play it into your internship, right? Uh, so usually the first year, the core courses are very rigid, uh, but in the case of FICWA, you have this uh, career-oriented or academic scheduling, right, which makes it more flexible uh, for you even before you get into your uh, uh, first year internship, right? Uh, now let's get more specific into the essays. Uh, like like last year, in fact, a couple of years, they have had the same thing. They have three required career goals essays, okay? Very clean. You have about 100 words for each one. Uh, first question, what are your short-term goals post-MBA? Very clean, very crisp, 100 words. I need you to tell me what is it that you're going to do. Along with that, tell me how would a day in your life look like? Correct? So try to talk about your immediate post-MBA goal, right? If you want to say consulting, talk about the kind of consulting uh, work that you will do. Um, talk about what would you do in consulting. Don't just say, I want to go to McKinsey. You need to tell what is it that you bring, uh, you know, what will you do over there? Uh, are you looking at digitizing companies? Uh, so whatever your take is, you need to talk about that. Uh, one mistake that a lot of people do is short-term goals, they start talking about like why MBA and why, what is that background and stuff. No, just tell me post-MBA, what will you do? Second question, what are your long-term goals? Unlike short-term goals, where you need to be very specific, long-term goals, you have, uh, you know, a little bit of leeway, right? You have a little bit of uh, this, this thing that you may choose to talk about something that you're passionate about, but don't talk about some random thing, right? So it should be aligned to what you have been doing. And you need to have a clear why to say, why is that my long-term goal? So I would not really bother about what my long-term goal is as long as I'm clear, why is it my long-term goal? Correct? Because they are expecting that things change, circumstances change, technology changes, and so much around you is not going to be the same. Uh, so they assume that your business plan uh, will evolve, especially after you go through a B school. But why you are doing that will always be constant, right? So that becomes your motivation. Third essay, very interesting. Life is full of uncertainties and plans and circumstances can change. As a result, navigating a career requires you to be adaptable. Should the short-term goals that you provide, that you provided above not materialize, what alternative directions have you considered? Now, 
A great question. I think all of you need to prepare for this question, uh, even for other schools, because really this is your plan B question, right? What happens if you don't get into your intended, uh, you know, post MBA career path? What, what's your backup, right? Um, my suggestion, two things over here. One, I have seen a mistake that students make is they say, well, I will do this, but then I'll go back to my, uh, you know, uh, goal of getting back to consulting. Don't do that. Talk about something very different. What is important is that you're able to connect it with your long-term goal, right? So you should be able to say, you know what, long-term goal entrepreneurship, for example, I can go through as a consultant or I can go through as a product manager, correct? So if not consulting, I would like to do product management, right? So you are talking about two different industries over here. Uh, so that's what I would say. Again, you have 100 words, so you can describe what you will do. The only difference over here is you want to probably add how it will eventually lead to the same, uh, you know, long-term career goals. So if you are able to map it to your long-term career goals, great. Okay. So probably spend at least uh, a sentence or two talking about that. And that brings me uh, to the favorite part of uh, the Fuqua application, which is the 25 random things uh, essay. Uh, you would have probably read it, uh, but I'll just read it for you. The admission committee also wants to get to know you beyond the professional and academic achievements uh, listed in your resume and transcript. Uh, you can share with us important life experiences, your likes and dislikes, uh, hobbies, achievements, fun facts, or anything that helps us understand what makes you who you are? Share with us your list of 25 random things about you. Okay, so here is a cool exercise that you can do. So this is great, uh, you know, even for knowing ourselves better, correct? Not just from a B-School perspective. So what you can do is, um, you can take a bunch of post-it notes, correct? And what you can do is take a wall, right? Maybe it's just uh, in your room or maybe take a large board. And what you can do is, you can create, uh, you know, different sections, right? Uh, the first section could be called childhood, right? So your growing up years, your uh, time when you were in school, um, right from the time you were born, actually. The second section would be about your college days, because I think that, that you know, significantly uh, changes who we are. So something about college, um, something about work, right so the third thing would be work okay fourth you could have something about uh, your extracurricular interests and passion okay just keep one for that and the fifth one keep it only for your quirks your personality uh, something unique about you that you have developed something that you have always had so put that as your fifth right so just to reiterate childhood college work extracurriculars slash hobbies, fifth personality, correct? Now what I want you to do is take these post-it, okay? Try to write as much as possible. So let's start with childhood, right? Uh, anything unique about your name that you think is interesting? Uh, some story that you heard from, uh, you know, your uh, parents about how uh, perhaps you were uh, swapped for another baby, right? This mistakes happen in hospitals. So did something of that sort happen? Uh, talk about your growing up years, anything interesting, uh, anything about your family that you think we would like to know, correct? Do not try to retrofit this whole MBA story over here. This is not to say you're a born leader. Mistake that people do is over here, they start thinking like, right from eight, five, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Please don't write that, okay? Don't try to retrofit. Just try to be interesting. They want to see who is this person. They want to say, you know what, I want to meet this person. I want to talk to him. I want to see him on campus. Right? That's what they, you need to evoke. Then let's get to college. Right? Uh, so anything. So don't, one mistake that you might end up doing, very, very, very important. Keep your resume, keep your application in front of you. You have already written a lot. Don't repeat anything that is in your resume. Don't tell them which college you graduated from. Don't tell them what was your specialization. Don't tell them about any project. Tell them fun stuff. You could even say that, uh, you know, you married your, uh, you know, uh, college sweetheart, right? So people think, oh, wow, can I say that in an MBA application? The Fuqua MBA 
25 random things allows you and i know uh, my students who have written uh, real personal stuff uh, and and you know it's it's it was funny but at the same time uh, gave a perspective of who they were so talk about college um, maybe there is something that you learned when you are in college maybe that was the first time you stayed away from home uh, maybe that was the first time you learned how to cook right whatever you could you could talk about that work if childhood and college had a lot of things work will also have a lot of things again don't talk about work related projects gets boring right something that you know happened at work maybe in the cafeteria maybe about your choices maybe you again moved cities uh, something interesting about your work uh, something interesting about your project something that you learned something that you did okay again no repetition of your resume fourth your hobbies your likes your dislikes uh, here i have had students tell things like whenever i see a four digit number uh, in the in a in a car registration plate i automatically start you know multiplying subtracting the numbers so it's just me i've been doing that for many years but it's a weird quirk that i have someone else uh, said that they need to set uh, you know uh, so they they were so this this is a person who actually uh, played the guitar and he said you know there is this one tune i have never been able to play uh, it's almost like i'm jinxed every time i play that uh, you know it just goes off now think about it he has written the fact that he knows guitar as a hobby but this is a very funny thing right oh wow you know how is it like you know he's just not able to play a tune he's just jinxed in his head tells me something about that person right so this is the things that you like maybe you like uh, solo solving sudoku puzzles right maybe that's a hobby right so you say that every day morning uh, you know i start my day by solving a sudoku puzzle maybe that's your extra curriculum so it did not be big right it can even be a small thing last one personality uh, who are you as a person what are the weird things that you have done in life right uh, these are things that are unexplainable right inexplicable for example uh, i've had students write things like uh, i need 5 cups of coffee um, you know in the morning uh, before i really get into the groove i know it's not a good thing but hey that's me uh, i've had another student talk about the fact that uh, she sets alarms like five different alarms uh, spaced at random intervals so like 6:3 6:12 6:15 6, so you know so that she kind of wakes up Uh, i've had people talk about uh, how they hate uh, brinjal right they don't like they love eating everything vegetarian but brinjal is something that they uh, don't know they have never tasted brinjal so it could be anything about you that is personal to you correct now what happens when you have this whole wall filled with this bunch of uh, post it notes don't stop here go talk to your siblings talk to your mother talk to your father talk to your friends talk to people you have worked with uh, maybe call up this college buddy and say hey i am writing this can you tell me something weird that uh, happened in college right uh, call up a school friend you know hey you know what's up what 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 weird things that i do in school so when you start talking to people you will also start building a lot more stories right uh, we have worked with a lot of candidates in case you are applying to fiqua uh, you are worried what are the 25 things are these the right things i would love to have a chat with you uh, so please uh, write to us in the email and the phone number okay and uh, we can have a conversation on that with that i am going to go on to the next question the required question which is about the fiqua community and you uh, here it just says that it should be no more than uh, two pages in length and the question says fiqua prides itself on cultivating a culture of engagement our students enjoy a wide range of student led organizations that provide opportunities for leadership development and personal fulfillment as well as an outlet for contributing to society our student led government clubs centers and events are an integral part of the student culture and are vital to providing you with a range of experiential learning and individual development experiences based on your understanding of the fiqua culture how do you see yourself engaging and contributing to our community outside of the classroom fantastic question because if you're going to pay all that money and you're going to land up at a b school you better know what you're going to do that for the two years i've had a lot of students come and tell me by the time you reach the second year 
your schedule is pretty much up to you. You get to pick and choose what you want to do, you know, what electives, what student bodies you want to be part of, what cultural events you want to be part of, and that pretty much is going to be your whole day. First thing, research, 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 right? Uh, we, we have some info about the FICUA school in our website as well, but research at the FICUA website, talk to people, uh, try as much as possible to know more, right? Now that you know all the things that happens outside the classroom, and by the way, let me tell you this is true for most top schools, you will learn more outside the classroom than you would learn inside the classroom, right? That experience is going to be really rich. And most MBA programs are made in such a way that your experiences will always be, you know, a little different, uh, you know, uh, based on what experiences you choose to have. So, what I would then do is I would pick my top four, okay? Three to four. I don't think the number should exceed more than four. What I do with these three or four things is I will talk about the club now. Here is where you have to be very different, right? Don't just say things. Like right? one mistake that people do, uh, I saw what the technology club does at FICUA. I'd be interested in participating in the technology club. And then they talk about, you know, stuff that they have done bad approach. Here is what you need to do. Try to approach it in three ways. First, what club or activity or, you know, thing that I would do alongside my, you know, studies. First, identify that. Second, tell how will that club help meet your aspirations? How it will help you in your future goal? How will it Enhance who you are as a person. Third, and this is where the most important thing comes. How can you contribute? What will you do? To say that I'll be part of the consulting club is just one thing, right? Say that, you know, as part of the consulting club, you know, one thing that really interests me, okay, is the fact that uh, there is this uh, leadership series. And as part of the leadership series, you call really eminent personalities. And I was just looking at the profiles of people who came in and I would love to do that because that would give me the challenge and I've done this and blah, blah, blah. You get the drift, right? So the reason I said four is you ought to fit it into two pages. So you probably have like, you know, four clear paragraphs. And then as always, all essays, make sure very strong beginning, very strong ending. And if you're able to tie the beginning with the ending, Great, nothing like it, right? So my suggestion, that's how you should uh, approach it. They have an optional essay. I would, uh, you know, uh, I've always given this advice. Optional essays, I would play it by the year. I would probably just, uh, you know, make sure that uh, I uh, talk about something that is significant, okay? Um, either a gap in my career, very low GMAT scores, in which case you should not be applying, but still, uh, very low GMAT scores, uh, or it could be something very weird, like I've had uh, students who have already done their MBA, right? So they go in for a second MBA, MBA, so they felt that optional essay could be a great place to write that. So whatever, you know, you think is significant, please put that over there. And I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked, uh, you know, the advice that I gave. I would love to hear your comments, your feedback, and also any particular questions about challenges that you have faced, uh, any random thing about you that you're not sure you want to put, uh, you know, uh, in the essay. Make sure you go ahead and comment below. You can always write to us. Let us know uh, if there is a way in which we can work together. And if you like this video and you want to share it with others, please go ahead and subscribe and uh, share this video. We would be more than uh, happy to spread the message. Thank you.